services to them. And um, we are now faced with the loss of state revenue from the uh, state mandated costs. So uh, we're not receiving, uh, in our county, that amounts to about $1.8 million. So this bill would uh, uh, be significant in reducing our burden in conducting these elections. Thank, Thank you. you. Others in support? Hi, my name is Carrie Asbury. I'm the chair for the Sacramento County Democratic Senate. Well, excuse me for a minute. Uh, Madam Secretary, can you please establish a quorum? Please call the roll. Correa. Present. Correa here. Lamalfa. Here. Lamalfa here. De Leon. Here. De Leon here. Gaines. Here. Gaines here. Lou. Here. Lou here. We have a quorum. Please proceed. Uh, start again. My name is Carrie Asbury. I'm the chair for the Sacramento County Democratic Central Committee. And just echoing what um, Joe Levine said, this would be a, a, of great benefit to our county elections office and their resources and it would also changing our method of election from assembly district to supervisorial district aligns us with all the other parties which already do so in our county and therefore making that's where the benefit comes in for them and the way Sacramento has been redistricted by assembly district it makes it very difficult um, with the kind of piecemeal that we have uh, for the five assembly districts that remain in our county, um, which kind of initiated our change to supervisorial district. Thank you. Others in support? Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Rhonda Pascal on behalf of Secretary of State Deborah Bowen. While the Secretary hasn't taken an official position on this bill, I do want to take this opportunity to thank Assemblymember Ma and staff for working with our office on the, the what we believe are technical amendments that will provide clarity to certain Central uh, Committee candidates and elections officials when verifying their nomination signatures. Thank you. Thank you. Others in support? Yes, my name is Bob Richard. I'm here representing the Peace and Freedom Party of California. Uh, we submitted a letter of opposition to this bill, uh, and I just want to say that Ready. pending yes, pending the amendment that uh, Assemblymember Ma described a couple of minutes ago, we are withdrawing that opposition. What do you mean pending? You mean now with the amendment? You with the making? amendment. So it's no longer pending. You're actually withdrawing your opposition. Um, if, if the amendment is as advertised, yes. Thank, thank you very you. much, and thank you. Thank you. Others in support? Opposition? Opposition. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mark Seidenberg. I'm chairman of the American Independent Party of California. I'm also the chairman of the Orange County Central Committee of the American Independent Party. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're opposed to this piece of legislation. We, uh, the first issue, we think it, the pr bill's probably unconstitutional on two grounds, and I'll go on that in a moment. Uh, just a second, I need to get my notes out. Back in uh, 1975, um, the American Independent Party was uh, given the same rights as the Democratic Party and the uh, Republican Party, which enjoyed from 1967, to be exempt from paying the filing, excuse me, to be exempt from uh, paying notary fees in the state of California uh, so we can get our people sworn in at no fee, which is the, what the current law is, and this will change it, and we'll, if it passes, we'll make everybody on a central committee uh, have to pay $10 for the notary services, uh, maximum. Some people will waive it, but the, the, that's a problem, which we had. Uh, the origin of this goes back to, uh, um, the, for the uh, Democratic Party, goes back to the old uh, legislation of Section 8828 of the uh, Mr. Seidelman, yes. so the, your, your concern, Mr. Seidelberg, your issue then is a $10 fee everybody's going to have to pay. That's one of our issues. The other, uh, um, the other issue we have concerns with are the um, issues of um, the constitutionality of um, putting um, people to taking oaths um, before the chairman and the vice chairman. Um, it doesn't. Wouldn't, first of all, it wouldn't work because we have people. We don't have counties that are organized, so there'd be no way of uh, having prior chairman or current chairman give the oath. The um, 
members of the legislature, for an example, uh, can give, uh, let's say, can take oath under, I think, uh, Government Code 1225. It's basically this bill is saying that the chairman or the prior chairman of a county central committee of all parties can des makes the designation who could take oath. Now, judges can take oath, so does members of the legislature. So it basically is telling uh, the legislature and judges that they have uh, to get approval from the chairman or the uh, prior chairman of a county central committee in order to give an oath, which uh, uh, I'm assuming members of the legislature do not want their restrictions on their oath taken, and I believe it's unconstitutional to uh, tell the court that they have authority to give oaths, but they have to wait to get approval from a political party as a chairman and, um, or the prior chairman. Uh, just a short piece of history, back in, uh, in 2008, I know the Republican Party was in litigation in Los Angeles over the problem of two uh, contested uh, uh, um, parties in Los Angeles County claiming that they were the chairman. If they pass a bill like this, this would just draw out the stuff into the courts. I know the Democratic Party, because I talked to the chairman, I think, of Butte County, who told me that she was chairman of San Luis Obispo County, and they had massive litigation. I think it was Wilson versus the uh, Democratic Party Central Committee. And uh, she said she was imposed to this bill because uh, of those same kind of problems. I've also talked uh, over the weekend to the uh, uh, chairman of the Democratic Party for Alpine County, and he told me he was opposed to this piece of legislation. Uh, yes, sir. If I, if I may. What if you strike the area, the section that you require that they take the oath? I'm willing to do that. Would that be address your concern, sir? Uh, uh, yes. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was easy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> good, good staff work. <laughs> Any op any further opposition? Mr. Chairman, we, question? Yes, sir. Now, what what did we strike that oath requirement for? Is it individual to the party, or is it for any? How, how, what what are we doing here? Just for the central committee members who have been elected. They're, they're, under this amendment, they would no longer be required to take an oath. No, anymore. that was not what I thought. I thought the striking the part of the chairman and the vice chairman. Uh, doing the oath, and we can right, get, we're clarifying get, this one up. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. I, I, no, we still want to take the oath because we ha believe we have to. That was not what my intention was. My issue, what I thought, what we were doing right now was saying that the chairman or the immediate past chairman may be added to anybody else who give an oath. We still want to take the oath. That was what we just changed it from to, to May. So, if the, if the if the Register of Voters doesn't want to give the oath, we could find a notary public to do it. We could find a judge. We could find a member of the legislature. It's Go ahead and address that issue. Okay. So I, I think there's confusion, right? It's not part of the state um, election. It's not state. It's like I get elected to the Democratic Women's Political Caucus. I don't. I'm not required to take an oath and get a certificate of election. May I comment on this? Well, I was just going to Hold on uh, uh, first uh, chair's request that the state constitution requires certain office holders uh, like, uh, to take oaths. Central Party central committee members aren't in that list of, uh, that are required pursuant to the constitution to take an oath. So I, I Wondering when you said you have to take an oath, when you said have to, uh, who's forcing that? Prop 14, uh, my understanding is that the reason why they first went into effect, at least by 1967, I got the statutes here, when the legislature first decided on it for the Republicans and the Democratic Party, the taking of the oath, was because we had to do the, for the state vending who uh, hold public offices and trusts. Uh, for run for electors for president of the United States. And that was the reason why the oath requirement went in effect, and that's what the legislature decided back in 1967. And then in 1975, uh, uh, the American Independent Party was added to the Republicans and the Democrats. 
Uh, I can give you the section numbers right now. I have the notes here. Uh, just a second. Well, let, let's let's focus here on, on the specific okay. issue we got. Okay. If we just change the word to May, would would that solve it? And said, and said, delete host and just say well, May take an oath. Current law right. says. Oh, you mean give them the option of taking Correct. an oath? You may you may take an oath before your committee chair. No, the, 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 no the, the may I was talking about uh, uh, um, was that the county central committee chairman or the um, immediate past chairman may give the oath. Right. May give the oath. will make it may. Make it may. From, yeah, from, to may. That would solve our problem. Th then wouldn't we be back to what the original law says if it's a may? We just would. Uh, it, uh, uh, they wanted to eliminate judges and uh, and members of the legislature and mayors from from giving an oath unless the party designates it. And the the problem I see it is that when you have sometimes multiple parties. Uh, you've been in politics, gentlemen. You know that county central committees. Uh, I used to be another party, uh, Republican, years ago. And I remember when I was in college, the young Republicans, they'd have one meeting down the hall and another meeting down the hall. They just break up. The benefit of the um, calling the election, this is the other issue, calling the election that the states, that the, uh, uh, the county election official calls the election gets out this problem about different factions of political parties. He calls it for the specific date, and then there's no meetings down the halls. The issue about who should um, call the, um, who gives the oath of office, make it mandatory on the chairman or the immediate chairman. It should be up to the individual who got elected to the county central committee or deemed elected to the county central committee by the board of supervisors to uh, have the his choice you can have the one that we provide to him at the meeting to take the oath like a notary republic or a judge or he could find somebody else to do it my concern is uh, we had a member one of our uh, counties who was Muslim and uh, he was embarrassed to put a Quran to his head when he took his oath because I understand that's how Muslims take their oaths. They take the Koran, put it to their head. And he wanted to do it in private, and there was no problem with it. So, you know, people have different religious beliefs. You know, uh, Quakers don't want to uh, be ridiculed because they didn't want to take an oath. They wanted to take an affirmation. And so this is... Let, let, let's, let's try to figure this out. Where... You, okay, let, yeah, Mr. Lamont, where are you going? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let, let's just break this back down to a simple thing here, then. Yes, the, please. Um, you're concerned about who would be administering an oath. We, you want to make it more, you have a wider group of people that could administer the oath, but it what the law is trying to fix gives the oath. is that election officials don't have to because of cost savings, etc. You want to make sure people are given the opportunity to take an oath, but not have somebody be able to play games with them being able to receive their oath. Yes. yes, sir. And we don't necessarily think the election officials really doesn't have to give the oath. We can get a mayor to do no, it. We can get a judge. That's what bill's trying to fix here a little bit. It's not requiring that in the class, et cetera. So uh, we need to stay away probably from the the May because then it's going to draw them back into what we're pulling no. out of here, correct? It, no, the, no, the shell. It sells, a, the, it sells a chairman or the immediate past chairman shall give the oath of the party. May is sufficient to us. That means we can go get a judge or a mayor or uh, a court reporter or a... Uh, so we're back with your solution then? No. We're, we're, not, we're not saying that the, the, the election official has to give the oath because any officer of the state... Uh, the election official could uh, choose to... Back to me. Back to me. Not do so. They could yes. opt. They, if they're asked, they can say no, no, thank you. Right. Right. They don't have to. We can go and. Pick That's what you're looking any, for. Yeah, we're just looking for. Okay, we can get anybody else to give an oath. We just don't want to uh, strict it to the chairman or vice chairman. Well, we're, actually, we're the chairman or the to, immediate past chairman. An, an of a expanded party. group of people can give the oath. Is where this is trying to go. We just don't want to make the chair, the uh, election official do it. It's, you, don't want, you don't want to limit it to. 
Doug, I, I don't think he wants to limit it to those specific individuals. No. No, we want to just say they may do it. Or on somebody else. But, you know, we have the law currently allows all kinds of people to do it, members of the legislature, judges, clerks. And, that's, and you want to preserve that? Yes, we want to preserve that. I, I get that. So, so can we um, make an amendment to page 7, uh, B, put back in the word may, the oath of or affirmation? Page 8. Page eight oh, it's page 8. Sorry, I got it on page 7. Page 8. Eight, line 17, we want to, instead of saying shall, we'll go back to may be taken. Yes. Is that okay? It's yes. Two okay, so it's two places, fine. So, um, yes, so may be taken before add back any officer authorized to administer the oath. Yes. Office. Or. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, if you had to hold on a yeah. second, go ahead. What, what's the other issue that arises here? Well, in existing law, the word is may, right. but the county elections officials are concerned because they're being called upon to do these oaths of office. If we go back and put may in there, I'm not seeing how you can preclude them from being required to come back in and administer the oath of office. Can you have somebody so, from the county elected the county opine on this? Very important. Um, well, I mean, it could be judges, it could be legislators, yeah, right? right? Yeah, most or county, anyone who goes yeah. in. To most, most. I talked to other counties. Most judges volunteer to do it. Um, There's the key word, volunteer. Now, if the elections official wants to do it, it shouldn't be precluded from it, but they shouldn't be required to do it. Yeah, we're not. This is not the election so, official. This is talking about any members of the legislature. I think judge, May. And, may. And, and your your concern is you don't want the county elections officials to be compelled to do this. That's right, because in existing law it says may, and yet they feel like they're being compelled to do it in most cases. May is talking about uh, May is talking about officers. Oh, hold on a second, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Deborah Slatter, uh, Mr. Chairman. The oath or affirmation required by the section shall be taken um, before the chairperson is the way this has currently been amended. So um, I think that we're good with the suggestion that's been made as long as we only change that shall may, to may. may. Because then the, then the paragraph would read, the oath or affirmation required by this section may be taken before the chairperson of the county central committee, the immediate predecessor of the chairperson, or a designee of the chairperson, or his or her immediate predecessor. So that, that language is sort of shifting the burden on to the county chair or the immediate past chair, but with the May provision in there, if there is no one there to do it, then it could go to another party. But if it, but the code section has still amended out the reference to the elections officials. So I think we're, I think we're really uh, fine with that suggestion. If you accept that as a, or offer as an author, yeah, I don't we'll yeah, accept that. think that's the May, that, that solves the problem. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's do that. If Ms. Ms. Ma, then we'll do that. Yep. May. Yes. May. Michelle. Yes. Everybody okay? Opposition happy? Yes. Address very important concern. Thank you very much. Any further discussions from the committee? We have a motion to move the bill, Madam. Call the, uh, call the roll. Correa. Aye. Correa, aye. LaMalfa. Aye. LaMalfa, aye. De Leon. Aye. De Leon, aye. Gaines. Aye. Gaines, aye. Lou. Aye. Lou, I. That measure passes. That measure passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank no you further very much. business for this committee. We're adjourned. Thank you. Oh.